Hey YouTube, this is I Am Faja and I'm and we got a very rare treat for you today. Looky what we found sitting on a siding here in Kannapolis. And we are very fortunate because we are going to be able to give you a very detailed look at a Laram rail grinder. This is a RG401 and you can see it right there on the cab. And we're going to get a little interrupted here today because we got an Amtrak due here any minute. So uh, we're going to try to do a, a photo log journey of this vehicle for everybody out there who's interested in railroading and model railroading. This is going to be hopefully the best Loram video on YouTube. So let's go ahead and get started. What we're going to do is we're going to we're going to videotape this. Um, this engine down one side and then we're going to go over to the other side of the road and we're going to videotape it and uh we have a very special treat with us uh yeah uh Kannapolis. what'd i say okay yeah we're in Kannapolis, but uh, i've got somebody who uh, is very knowledgeable in uh, laram and uh, once we get this video shot we're going to take it back to the house and do a voiceover on it and uh we're going to show you some special treats All right, as we zoom in here, you're going to see a blue light. The blue light is normally flashing anytime the unit is sitting on a siding and it is not operating. The orange light will flash while the unit is operating. The white box on top is an air conditioning unit. The red light, I have no clue. The loudspeaker is to announce the hot rail signal or a short horn. That may be a camera to the left of the red light or a spotlight. Uh, not really sure about that and no clue what the red light is for. Okay, starting here uh, right under the word Laram, you're going to have a brown air pipe that runs uh, and connects all, uh, to all the cars. The, uh, the red lights and the white lights beside them are going to be the uh, standard running lights and then under those the round lights in the case all by themselves are the ditch lights. Then you have the couplers and of course the uh, horns and um, now we'll move on. All right, as we zoom in here behind the trucks, you're going to see the ladder leading up to the control cab. On the left-hand side, you're going to see a blue light. And on the right-hand side, you're going to see a silver box with a smash button on it. Just one of these big red buttons that you can walk up and slap with the palm of your hand. These are part of the hot rail warning system. The hot rail warning system is a, uh, an alarm system to tell folks while they're working on the train while it's on a siding uh, that uh, we got a train approaching you need to get off the rails you need to get out from under the train and you need to get up on the walkways on the sides of the units uh, the light flashes and the horn goes off and uh, basically when you're working on these units it's very loud so you might not hear the hot rail warning siren but you will almost always see the blue light and you will see both or hear one of the other uh, the uh, little button underneath the silver box on the right is just a standard work horn that you can walk up and slap and it'll go rah, 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 rah. All right, as we start to go up the ladder here, we're going to notice uh, at the very top on the left a uh, water nozzle. It's part of the fire control system. Uh, these things cause fires. I mean, the sparks will fly out from them on both left and right hand side for about 12 or 15 feet. Uh, when someone, a member of the crew, notices a fire, uh, they'll alert everyone and somebody will go uh, man this nozzle and uh, take care of any little brush fires that occur while the unit's grinding. Okay, as uh, we take a look at the uh, water car here, uh, you're naturally going to see the walkways that run from end to end on the car and the ladder rungs that allow uh, the guys to get up on top of the car. Uh, if you look at the very end, you'll see a round wheel, and that is the uh, part of the handbrake system. If you look at the containers being held down by the bungee straps uh, below the walkway under the M in Laram, 
that is part of the fire suppression system. This is where the foam is kept, and the foam is mixed uh, into uh, the water. It's biodegradable, so it's green. And uh, just in front of that, behind the front truck, under the L in the ram, you'll see a uh, square box, a gray box. That's where the tools for the water car are kept at, and the uh, the water pumps are uh, in this area. So we'll just call that the uh, water pump housing. All right, now we're just going to scan some footage here, uh, zooming back in on the uh, water car. And um, these are part of your carriages here. These are the grinding cars. Um, and there's, uh, looks like there's four of them, and then the dust car, and then water car number two, because it's the second uh, water car behind the FCC. And um, we're just, uh, again, just an opportunity here to grab some still footage. Uh, going down looking at the lower half of the uh, FCC, uh, the traction motors, uh, again the fuel tank, uh, the rear traction motor, moving on to water car number one, uh, another look at the uh, water pump housing, the foam containers, and what you're seeing here, and there again you got your hot rail warning system, your blue lights, your push buttons, uh, your shore horns, these are actually the grinding carriages here, the buggies if you will. And uh, we're going to take a closer look at them as we start to walk down the track here in just a few minutes. Um, you can see new grinding stones hanging on the catwalk there. Old grinding stones, the dust car, water car number two. Uh, getting kind of shaky here because this thing's kind of far away from me. So we're going to pull back out. And I believe at this uh, point here, we're going to start walking a little bit. All right, now we're going to head over here and we're going to do a little walk down of this guy. So uh, stick around with us. Film might get a little jumpy, but uh, we'll see what happens. All right, as we're making our way down past the FCC here, I want to point out this ladder again. If, uh, if at the top of the ladder you made a left and went toward the fire nozzle, there would be a door there that would allow you to enter the cab of the FCC. If you made a right, you would enter another door and go into the engine housing room of the FCC where the radiator, the uh, engines, the turbines, and all that are held. So uh, that is the uh, lifeblood of the FCC right there. Okay, what we're looking at here now is a great shot of the brand new grindstones. Uh, these things are like 22 pounds. They're uh, in an aluminum ring, and they're a fiberglass and coarse stone compound. And uh, they do not grind the way they're they're standing right now. They're standing up like on their edge, like a uh, automobile tire. Uh, when they're mounted on the um, the buggies and they're grinding. Uh, Imagine taking a, a car tire standing up on its edge just like it would be on an automobile and then just knocking it over to where it's laying flat on the ground like you dropped a coin. That's the way uh, that these things grind and uh, <laughs> it should be important to point out uh, that these things are radioactive. 
Also, uh, the new ones are hanging on the hooks and the used ones are stacked up on the uh, catwalk. So if you use your imagination and turn your head uh, and hold your tongue just right, you can see the difference in the thickness of them. Alright, so uh, let's move on. Now we're looking at one of the uh, buggy cars here and we're focusing on the front of it here. Uh, these are two large motors that are mounted vertical and they're part of the dust control system. Uh, these, uh, This new grinder here, uh, um, RG401, uh, is amazing but uh, it grinds really fast, a lot faster than some of the older grinders but they're still created a lot of dust uh, as the rail uh, is, uh, is ground off and the ground stones uh, uh, start to deplete themselves but what this uh, this big vacuum system does here is it sucks up as much of the dust as it can out from under the cars and then it funnels it through pipes all the way back to the uh, the filter car and uh, then it spews it through the filters and puts the air back out into uh, the environment uh, with uh, a large large amount of that dust captured uh, part of the maintenance crews jobs at night is swapping out those filters Here's, uh, here's two more of the uh, dust catchers and the uh, red drum, the 55 gallon drum is hydraulic fluid so it looks like these guys are going to be doing some, putting some hydraulic fluid in some systems tonight. Here's another picture of the uh, hot rail warning system. Uh, right here is where the blue light is located at and here in just a moment we're going to see where the, uh, the slap button is to set off the hot rail warning siren and lights. Uh, just a little bit better angle so you can see what uh, I was talking about earlier. Alright, we're just walking down the train right now uh, coming in uh, up to uh, the grinding car. We're probably going to zoom in here take a look at uh, the carriages. Uh, you walk away your ladder, your hot rail warning system. Uh, you can see the little high, uh, the high rider wheels there. That's what your carriages run on and it adjusts the, uh, how much uh, the grindstones are grinding while they're down there. Keep in mind all this is computer controlled and uh, toward the end of the video we're going to take a look at the uh, inside shots of the FCC and uh, you'll see how many computers it takes to, uh, to operate this unit when it's going down the road. Um, you know, just more detail pics here. Um, back at Water Car One, the FCC. Um, you can tell I'm kind of redundant with my video footage, but uh, if you're a fan of uh, my YouTube site, you know that uh, I typically like to try to take more than necessary pictures. Um, again, looking on back, we're coming up to uh, the caboose down there on the end, and uh, just another shot of new grinding stones being ready to put on. Uh, three carriage buggies. The uh, carriage buggy up front is coarse and then the one in the middle is medium and then the one toward the rear of the unit is fine and um, they just continue traveling down the road uh, grinding and determining if more needs to be taken off of it and we're also going to have a couple shots at the end of the video of what a rail looks like uh, prior to being ground and uh, what it looks like after this unit um, uh, grinds over it. Uh, it actually ground up to uh, this main line here and then backed onto the siding uh, before it came to rest for that day. Again, just more shots. Uh, a lot of hydraulic lines. Um, that curtain you see hanging under the uh, the carriages there, that's the, uh, the uh, spark blanket uh, to try to control the sparks and keep them from uh, blowing too far away from the train. Uh, you can see how high that one carriage, that one buggy was uh, arced up there. Uh, these things can be uh, canted forward, back, left, right, uh, just whatever needs to be done to the rail as it, uh, as it goes down through there. And um, so yeah, let's just go ahead and uh, get back to walking here.
Okay, this here is the dust car, and its sole purpose in life is to uh, suck up the dust out of the hoses that the uh, uh, the dust motors that are on the ends of the uh, the carriages pull up after the grindstones have done their job working on the rails. Um, it has its own independent motoring system, a vacuuming system if you will, that sucks air and dust through the hoses and then pulls the, or blows the, uh, the, uh, the dirty air through the filtering system and then out into the world. Uh, you can see how dirty it is up across the top there. Um, my knowledge of this vehicle is, is not very well, uh, but you got your fuel tank there in the middle and uh, it keeps this thing from looking like the Tasmanian devil going down the road. All right, here, check out the catwalk. Uh, it's where the tools and stuff are stored. There's a little mini crane right there. We saw a guy cutting on a piece of pipe on it a while ago. This is basically their tool shack. This right here is the FCC mini caboose. It's where they hang out. It's like their break room, you know. You got everything in there. You got your lockers in there. You got your food in there. But the other interesting thing is about the American flag and how it's blacked out. Well, it's not really blacked out. It's grind dust out. Grind dust attracts to color. Uh, they've tried Clorox on this stuff, super green, everything. It just will not come out of it, and uh, there's no use in fighting it, but it looks cool, right?
Okay, here we are on the other side of the track with the derailleur facing the wrong way. Oops, <laughs> no, I didn't say that. I'm sorry. All right, so now we're looking back at the uh, back at the caboose, and uh, I think I mentioned earlier that this engine can be ran from both directions. It cannot. This is a caboose. This is a look at their ditch lights, uh, and. Um, Actually, I take that back. This one, I believe, can be run from either end. Either way, we got a good shot here of the blue light, the orange light, the, um, the main headlight there up here at the top. We got more pictures of the fuel nozzle. We're going to get a zoom in up here uh, on the side. These are little work lamps that go out and allow the guys to work, and they ain't totally in the dark. Um, ditch lights, running lights. Uh, air horns. We're going to move around a little bit because I'm freehanding this one. I've got a street right here on the right. And I'm going to be going around the tree, so um, we're just kind of walking and freehanding this a little bit. More detail shots. Uh, you can see the cameras up there on the roof line of the caboose. I think we're going to zoom in on those here in just a minute. Fire control system, fire suppression system. Um, more dirt. You can see it dripping water right there. There's the two cameras. One gives you a long shot of what's way behind you, and one lets you see what's directly uh, right there off your uh, off your coupler. Um, two hoses. The one in the middle is wider. gives you a wider berth of water. Now we're just going to make our way down the uh, right hand side here and um, if it goes blank on the audio it's, um, it's not you, it's me. It's just that I've talked a lot through this video and I'm getting tired. I'm kidding. Alright, so uh, now we're making our way down here. Here's another good shot of the, um, the traction motors. Um, remember these are geared just like on the diesel lo locomotive. You can see a little storage area here by the 401 where they got their tools and stuff hanging. Uh, storage area uh, under what would be the fuel tank. Um, and what amazed me the most about this uh, about this unit getting this close to it was its, uh, its simplicity. Um, it's just a bunch of metal with a lot of stuff working on uh, going on on the inside. Um, again, traction motor on the left, uh, wheel bearing trucks on the right, and guys upstairs installing the lights and stuff and getting it ready to go. I'm going to be zooming in on a lot of the decals here. Not the decals, guy. can you tell I'm an HO uh, train guy? Um, a lot of the signage uh, on the train, again, for anybody who's interested in trying to reproduce this. I think one guy tried it one time and as far as I know he got as far as duplicating the FCC and then um, went mad and killed himself. So again we're looking at everything backwards. Um, again this is the foam storage tanks here and right there is another set of uh, storage area for tools and the uh, water pump housing. I uh, got your your walkway and again this is water car 2 because it's the second water car on the train behind the FCC. Uh, yeah I wanted to duck under that tree but it didn't work so we'll just walk around. Um, again just more hoses, more cables, uh, just crazy. I mean uh, 25,000 gallon tank for those of you across the pond that uh, has it done in liters. Um, again, this is the uh, the dust car, and what you're going to see up here in a minute, right there you go, right there, that's a good shot at the filters on the inside of that dust car. Uh, those, uh, I believe those have to be changed nightly, and I believe they're industrial filters, which means that they bring them out and then they blow them out, they don't bring them out and throw them away. A lot of, um, this entire train will be blowed down top to bottom front to rear, rear to front, bottom to top every night. Another little work lamp there because uh, remember and while we're looking at this let me just tell you how this thing operates guys and this is worth listening to. This train travels normally uh, seven days a week. Okay, It's going to be I don't know it's let's just say it, it started in Charlotte, North Carolina at six o'clock on a Monday morning and I'm going to interrupt myself real quick uh, this is the back side of the dust motors on the back of the carriages. These are tubular filters. So they just turn a lock and they pull them straight out and then they blow them down. And um, it's going to be start grinding at 6 o'clock on a Monday morning in Charlotte, North Carolina. And it's going to be grinding anywhere between 4 and 18 miles an hour depending on which unit it is and the age of the unit. Well, when the night crew gets off at 6 o'clock in the morning when the... Uh, when the crew driver brings uh, the day crew to the 
uh, site where the train is sitting on a station or on a siding, he's going to pick up the night crew and take them 50, 100, 200 miles down the road and put them in a hotel that when this train is done grinding for the day, the train will be there. So he goes and drops them off at the hotel, and then he comes back and he runs errands for um, uh, for the train. Now real quickly, that hole there, we talked about that before, that was because the grindstone got put on backwards and it blew the sparks directly at the uh, spark curtain and it burned a hole in it. If you look at the one on the right, you can see where they had one and it got patched. So um, the crew driver is now with the day crew and they're grinding and he's running and picking up hydraulic fluid or he's running and picking up mail and doing whatever he can do. So when the train gets to where it's going to stop now 200 miles down the road, he picks up the day crew and takes them to the hotel where he dropped off the night crew, takes them back out to wherever the train's parked at. It could be in the middle of the desert. It could be in downtown Wyoming. Uh, just wherever it stopped. Now this is looking under the carriage and that crap you see right there, that's built up grind dust. Uh, that one little chunk probably weighed about 10 pounds. So uh, he's now um, got the day crew taking them to the hotel and um, the night crew's out working on the train for 12 hours. Um, fighting rattlesnakes, bugs, coyotes, mosquitoes, whatever. And uh, when they get off Tuesday morning at 6 o'clock, uh, the, um, the crew driver has brought the guys over from the hotel and put them on the train. The train starts grinding. He puts the night crew in the crew cab in the crew van and he takes off another 150, 200, 300 miles down the road, puts them in a hotel that when they wake up that afternoon, the train will be in that station. So uh, it's, it's a 24 hour job, seven days a week, occasionally uh, get a, a Sunday off here or there, but uh, normally always moving. So uh, we're just walking uh, our way down here. I haven't been counting as I was talking, but I think we're at uh, grinding car one because it looks like we're coming up on water car one because it's the first water car behind the FCC. And um, just basically rolling on right here. Um, I think I'm going to have to mute some of the uh, sound because these things were humming. Uh, I tell you what, let me pause video for a second, and I'll let some or pause audio, and I'll let some of the grind, the noise come in from what's happening. I think that's that Amtrak. This might be kind of cool. Is he stopping? Oh, here he comes.
All right, now we're just going to take a look at some of the stills that uh, I'm Big Diesel took uh, while I was running around with the video camera in my hand. This is uh, just another look at the uh, FCC and, uh, you know, just a little bit longer view uh, in case uh, I was zoomed in too far for you or the video went too fast for you. For those of you out there that are really into detailing, I've, I've often wanted to try to take a... Uh, a couple models and build one of these things myself. Uh, if you look up there by the red light, uh, we did confirm that that is the running headlight, the headlamp for the FCC. Uh, as you can see, this is RG401. I believe it's the newest rail, gl uh, rail glander out there. Um, LMIX, LMIX, no idea what that is. Uh, just another shot of the ladder and the uh, other blue light and the alarm system for the uh, the hot rail warning system. The hot rail warning system is uh, very, um, very crucial to these guys. Uh, as we look at these uh, photos here, I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about how it works. Uh, normally, this grinder will grind during the day, uh, aka operate. They call the day shift operate and the night center, uh, the night's maintenance or day shift, which is ops for operations. Uh, and they normally travel. Uh, grinding they grind from wherever they start at to wherever they're going need to back off the mic here a little bit I know I'm probably killing you guys let's push it out here a little bit further away okay I hope that's better but uh, they'll operate uh, during the day with the uh, with the train moving I believe RG 401 uh, can grind and do about somewhere between 12 and 18 miles an hour while it's grinding. The old grinders, I had to travel somewhere between four and six miles an hour. Uh, this is a, another look at the uh, the water car, water car one, because it's right behind the FCC. Um, another look at the um, at the toolbox, the, uh, excuse me, the uh, water pump housing and the, uh, oh, and the uh, holder for the uh, foam material. And we're gonna get a close up of that here in a minute. Um, but again, uh, when it's operating at night, normally it parks on a siding. And uh, for those of you that are familiar with rail fanning, sidings are really close to the track. So you've got a, a night crew out there, a maintenance crew out there that's uh, laying up under uh, the buggies, under the carriages, uh, taking off the old grindstones and putting new grindstones on. And um, they will, um, oh real quick right here, I believe that white cone, I believe that's a GPS unit, I could be wrong. Um, but they're underneath working on grinding stone, changing filters, lubing fittings, doing whatever they do. Uh, so the superintendent's watching for trains to come by, but you know they have radio traffic. And uh, things can get kind of busy. Now this is a look into the uh, engine room of the FCC. We talked about that earlier. You just walk through that door and right there's the engine, the radiators, turbines, what have you. But uh, when somebody sees a train approaching, they hit that button and everybody jumps up or gets away from the track. Um, this is a picture here that I'm probably going to end up taking out. I had thought I had taken it out, but it was one that um, Diesel snapped of the uh, northbound uh, Norfolk Southern that was passing us. But we'll, have, we'll leave it in there for now because we're talking and the audio is going long. But right here we go. Okay, now this is a look at one of the carriages. Uh, the carriage is the, um, or excuse me, the buggy cars. The carriages are the three grinder, the grinding buggies underneath it. The, uh, the front one is uh, coarse, medium, and fine. And of course you can see the dust engines there. And we're going to talk about those a little bit. Um, this here is just another uh, look at uh, underneath the uh, the water car and how the uh, pipes and the hoses come together and allow all the cars to interconnect with each other. The um, next one coming up here is going to be a close-up of the carriage. Uh, and uh, what you're going to see right there, that... Um, that black curtain hanging underneath it, that's a spark curtain, a fire curtain, and it's basically uh, used to try to prevent the grinding stones from throwing sparks so far away from the train. Uh, again, if you can find some videos on this thing grinding at night, you are going to just, you won't believe what's coming. Uh, this is another picture of a, uh, a new grindstone. We talked, uh, talked about those earlier too, being radioactive, about 22 pounds, uh, fiberglass and uh, coarse uh, rock material uh, is what they used to grind with and it's wrapped in a uh, uh, aluminum metal ring. 
Uh, another close-up view of the uh, dust control system. Uh, again, those motors pump and they suck the dust uh, away from the engine, away from outside and into piping and they send it down to the dust car. Right here we're going to take a look at the motor. Uh, he had to zoom in pretty tight on this, but this is the motor that's right there in the corner of that thing that does all the sucking and then sends it down the pipe and then the other uh, motor in the dust collecting car keeps sucking just like a vacuum cleaner. Just imagine the uh, the attachment on your mom or dad or your vacuum cleaner that you pull off and get in the nooks and crannies with. This is basically the same system. Another pick of the used grindstones stacked up and the new grindstones hanging on the hooks there uh, so you can get a, a really sharp view of those uh, the next picture we're going to have here um, let me see yep here it comes it's coming up now is a look at the trucks underneath the um, the grinding uh, carriage or the grinding buggy uh, notice that these trucks are like most of the trucks that you see on cars there's really nothing special about them um, the trucks on the FCCs are traction motors. All right, again, another pick of the uh, the lubricant, and you can see the, uh, the little huffing motor there in the background. Uh, I mean, the the really important thing to, to keep in mind about this is uh, it's a dirty, dirty job. It is a dirty job. This thing, like I said before, just looks like the Tasmanian devil when it's coming. Now, this one probably doesn't look too dirty going down the road. Uh, all right, there again, there's a picture of the buggies again, and you can see all the hy hydraulic and electrical lines on them. Uh, that's allowed the, uh, to allow the carriages to, um, to shift at different angles depending on uh, what or how badly the rail needs to be ground to get it back together and where it should be uh, danger 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 uh, yeah pretty much you don't really want to go in there uh, access door to an engine room air conditioning units on top uh, to help keep the equipment cool now we're going to take a look here at this next picture and uh, this is uh, looking up toward the FCC. If you look in there on the left, you, uh, above the ladder where I pointed out the uh, blue light before, just in front of the fuel tank, uh, you can see that door that goes into the uh, forward. I don't know why. I, I don't know why I can't think of what FCC stands for right now, but I guess it's forward command car. All right, another look at uh, some of the. Um, um, the uh, dust collection system, the powerhouses for that, the vertical motors. Um, just again, just really amazing what these things do. Uh, let's see what we got coming up here now. And right here we go. All right, there's uh, another picture of the two uh, dust collecting units. Um, and look under the couplers, what, uh, what keeps the two cars connected, and you'll see a pipe. And we're getting ready to see a close-up view of that. And that is part of that dust collection system that runs from car to car to car. Right there it is. That's what you're looking at. That is that big Hoover vacuum cleaner hose that goes from car to car to car and allows the front uh, uh, carriage grinding car to... Uh, pick up dust and then send it through another hose, through another hose, through another hose until it gets back to the uh, dust collecting car. And just uh, another view there of um, now the FCC up front and then water car number one. Um, it's a highly technical term but it's the first water car behind the FCC. And then uh, your carriage uh, number one or grinding car one is the first one behind the FCC. So um, that's pretty how much how it works. All right, so uh, now we're back here to the uh, dust collector car, and again, you can see uh, this stuff just pulls the dust into it, and then it filters it and blows it out the side. Um, we were not able to get a picture of this thing grinding today, but we did get one. So there's your little tease for upcoming videos. So now we're looking at uh, carriage or grinding car number four, the um, the dust car, the uh, water car number two, and the end of the train. Uh, this is called a caboose, uh, but uh, it can actually it actually has cameras on it. Uh, he can control it from the front and use the cameras. So this thing literally uh, pulled past the siding, and then he was able to have the, the uh, switch throat and back on it without having to walk to the uh, the rear of it to uh, see what was going on. Here we're going to get a look at the uh, 
close up of one of the carriages and the uh, high rail wheel that supports it while it's down on the uh, on the track and a uh, lot of technical uh, stuff goes into this uh, uh, here's you another teaser too we're going to put some stuff up here at the end and uh, allow you to see inside the FCC oops did I let that sneak out all right another look at one of the grinding carriages and um, I mean you know we're getting a little long in the tooth with the video here but um, there's not a lot of high quality photos out there uh, on the web or on the net allowing people to see these cars and decide whether or not they want to try to tackle um, making a hobby out of them. Uh, this one got a little blurred, but um, we'll leave it in there for now. It's a little too late. We're coming up on the end of the video. Okay, here's a traction motor on one of the FCCs. It's actually used to propel the uh, the this unit is a piece of equipment just like on an engine or a locomotive the pick that's coming up behind it is a standard truck which is basically a non-powered unit it's not a traction motor right here this is what you see on your typical rolling stock it just supports the weight of the car um, that it's uh, that it's on um, again you know just standard railroad stuff here nothing fancy but again another close-up look of all the pipes and the hoses and everything and uh, how it uh, how it all works together uh, here's the top of the uh, dust control car you can see uh, uh, I believe those are more cone filters uh, we talked about them earlier the tubular filters uh, that are inside of the um, the dust vac motors on the end of the uh, end of the uh, grinding cars and here we go now we're going to um, expand out here and get an entire view of this beautiful dirty ugly contraption that just does an amazing thing uh, when you're talking about rail grinding uh, think of you getting a sunburn and your skin starting to peel uh, what happens is if the track starts to peel or crack that will eventually lead to damaging the wheels and uh, put stress fact uh, stress fractures in the wheel stress god I can't talk this evening uh, stress cracks in the wheel and cause the wheel to go bang if you've ever been sitting in a crossing and heard a train go by and it's going bang 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 well that's a flat spot on one of the wheels and that's not good for the rail the car or the cargo alright this is the caboose uh, the other FCC uh, it's basically uh, where uh, the guys hang out with when uh, they're not working. Um, there's a look uh, from the tail end up to the, uh, the head of this uh, little rascal. Now we're going to be coming up on a uh, pick of the caboose here in a minute and we're going to do a couple detailed shots of it uh, looking at the uh, fire compression or excuse me the fire suppression suppression system uh, as you can see here we've got three nozzles we got a large nozzle in the middle and we got two nozzles on the back so basically you can stand there actually yeah I need to stop the recording hold on just a second yeah this is a really good look here at the end of the caboose uh, you got your three hoses uh, you got an air hose that can be rolled off to the right of the steps uh, you got um, DC AC outlets there to run power tools. Uh, you got your uh, your hot rail, a blue flashing light, and uh, now keep in mind on the railroad system the blue light um, is operating, or excuse me, is uh, not operating uh, unless it's law enforcement. Uh, but on this particular system here, it's just easier to see the blue uh, at night than it is the orange. You got your horns, uh, you got your uh, hot rail activation, and if you want to see people scatter, man, um, you'll be working on this thing at 3 o'clock in the morning, about half tired because you've been working since 6 o'clock that night, and somebody hit that alarm, it'll wake you up. It'll wake you up real good. But, uh, you know, more detailed shots here. And now we're going. Yep. Now we're going to zoom in on those. So you can, you can stand behind this thing and, and have three guys working a fire system at one time. It, it's it's <laughs> it's quite interesting to see. Um, I believe the next pick we're going to pop up here is going to be on one of the uh, traction motors, and um, that should be coming up any second. Boom. All right. So there's the traction motor and the brake pad. And if you see all that stuff there, about seven o'clock. Uh, uh, almost dead in the middle of the center next to the brake pad. That's just built up grease and grime that's 
that gets caught up on these wheels, just dust and nastiness that get picked up by them and pulled up into the shoes. Uh, it's a dirty job. It's a dirty job, folks. Uh, larger picture here, um, another brake shoe with just grime and ugh, built up on the traction motor. All right, I had to just make a small adjustment there and get rid of some picks that uh, we didn't need in there. But again, just another look at the traction motor and the brake pad and the gook that gets built up on it. And lo and behold, here we come with the big Amtrak blowing up through big K-Town, big Kannapolis. Get you some interesting uh, looking at this grade as this Amtrak came blaring down through there. Um, they really open up to this area here. The uh, Amtrak's on the other side, and here comes the money shot right here. This is what Diesel called the money shot. You ready? Boom. Don't that look sharp? Awesome. Good job, Diesel. Good job. And uh, then, of course, it's going to blow on by. And um, what we're going to do here is I'm going to show you some pictures of the rail that had not been ground and then what it looks like after it has been ground. So this is, uh, this is from about six months ago uh, when they came through the last time. And you can see the little grind marks there on the edges and how smooth it's been worn in the middle. And uh, it, uh, it takes a while for it to build down, but it'll give you a good idea of exactly where the wheel uh rides on the rail and here's the one that they ground that day right before they pulled off onto that siding. Uh, significant difference in it. Very, very interesting. Um, these things do the job but you'll notice how the pattern goes. It doesn't, it almost looks round because the way that the uh, the um, grind uh, stones are laying on it. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, interior. Okay, there's a seat on the left that the uh, union rep will normally sit in, and the pilot in command will sit in the middle seat, and the superintendent or the um, super will sit in the seat on the right. Uh, you got your throttle there on, to on the right. You got two uh, computer screens up front there that uh, uh, give you the uh, display of what's going on with the buggies uh, while you're grinding. Um, you got, I, I, I can't even start to tell you everything that's in there, but if you look right out the front window and to the right and up, there's a monitor there, and that is the camera that looks out the back end of the um, caboose and um, just lots of bells and whistles and God knows whatever else goes on in there. It's it's a full time job, and from what I understand, uh, RG four hundred one, the one in we videoed, actually has two people working in it. One guy concentrating on driving, and the other guy who's concentrating on uh, on doing other things, uh, like running the carriages and stuff. All right, closer look here at the uh, station on the left with all of its controllers and its push knobs and everything. Uh, just a lot to do in there uh, in this particular older model grinder that uh, somebody finally uh, wised up and said you know what uh, we need to have two people in the front of this thing so uh, we can uh, we can do a good job and um, again bells and whistles and push buttons and pull buttons and toggle switches and stuff that looks like something out of Star Trek all right, now we're going to look over here. If you look right to the right of the back of the seat, you'll see a red handle and then a what looks like an old-timey gear shifter there on the right. That's your throttle, your throttle and your brake, more emergency stop switch, speeds indicator, uh, place for your notes, and a pair of Lance crackers. You got Lance in your pants? Anybody got Lance in your pants? Um, and if you look out the front windshield, if I'm not badly mistaken, that is either the camera for the front of the unit or that is a, uh, the front running headlamp on this unit. All right, here's another uh, pick. If you look directly to out the front windshield and to the right, if you can study up on that uh, monitor there, that is the rear camera and it shows the uh, trailing trucks behind. All right, so I think we got one more uh, little video to this thing, and uh, then we'll be uh, wrapping it up.